Trail Bike Roundtable. Hi everyone, I'm James Wong. I'm here at the Pink Bike Field Test here in Pemberton, BC. And it's time after two weeks of testing to talk about uh, our favorites, our least favorites in the trail category. So for the trail category, it's kind of amorphous, but we settled on front wheel travel of 130 to 150 millimeter, rear travel of 125 to 140, and we ended up with four candidates. The Norco Optic, the Intense Primer S, the Pole Stamina 140, and the Orbea Occam. Uh, all these bikes have something to offer and maybe some weaknesses, but what were your favorites? I think it's a hard one for me. Like to the two that stand out, it's obviously the Norco Optic and the Pole Stamina 140. Oh. I broke the pole. Man, <laughs> that's my favorite one. Both of those bikes are just like, they're just a ton of fun. I don't know, I'd have a hard time picking between them. I think it would come down to where I live because the Norco with 125 in the rear, 140 up front, it's probably the bike for the majority of people. But goddamn, that full stamina was so much fun down the hill. <laughs> what is it about that bike that, that you love so much? It is just so stable. Um, Leo has nailed the Geo on that thing. Like all these bikes should have much steeper seat tube angles. I think he's, he's on track there. Um, you need that if it's going to be that long and the pole is so good on the down because it is that long and that head angle But you need that seat angle to go along with it. Listen to you. Yeah, just like last year and year before you're all about the bikes are getting too long They're too slack. They're too sluggish. These are crazy numbers. I'm gonna ride hey, I've, I've been wrong before. <laughs> you're wrong. Yeah, yeah this one. Definitely. You know, there's there's still a place for bikes that use slightly more traditional geometry for sure but there's no arguing that a bike like the pole like it is easily the fastest bike here in the trail bike category down the hills. That's good. Yeah, I think for me it wasn't my favorite because it almost didn't feel like a trail bike. Right. Like that's why I picked the Optic. I like the Optic the best. Uh, 125 in the back, 140 up front. It's got this super sporty, fun feel, but I can get into some of the gnarlier stuff and just feel fine. I snuck out for a ride out this morning. I had all those bikes lined up that I could pick to anyone. I grabbed that again because it just felt super good and just even on the techie stuff, the suspension tune is great. So mm -hmm. that'd be the one, it feels like a new modern trail bike. Like if I was gonna have something, even if I had multiple bikes, that'd be the one that's like kind of do it all. So that's the one that you, that, that's the one that you would take home if you could. Yeah, I would take that one. Yeah. yeah, the pole's amazing and it is super fun, but it felt too much like an enduro bike for me. And with the pole, I'd probably just end up putting a 160 fork on it and that would be kind of like- You'd wreck it. Bike. One, how, well, I'd be slacker. How's it gonna you, wreck you don't, it? You're not gonna go any faster with another 10 mils up front. Just yeah. leave it alone, you know? But I just want to say also <laughs> the optic it's got 125 mils of travel, so it's the shortest travel trail bike that's here. Mm -hmm. It's your favorite, though, by far, it sounds yeah. like. And it all comes down to Geo, like Norco. Yeah, the Geo, and oh. that suspension tune as well, though. When I was riding today, yeah. I was thinking about that it only has 125 mils of travel, but it has this like super well-damped feel. Mm -hmm. It almost feels like the difference between, say, like a light casing tire and downhill casing tire. If you yeah. ever felt the difference, that kind of feels like that hits the ground, just kind of sticks. Yeah. Um, I think Norco definitely works some magic there. Like, it's, it's supple on top, it's plenty supportive, but I mean, Casmer and I were riding like idiots. I didn't smash onto the end of the travel, no clanging, like, yeah. it's pretty impressive. Did a good job mm. yeah. with that bike. All right, well, what was your least favorite out of the four bikes that you guys rode? Casmer? Yeah, uh, for me, it's gonna be that intense primer. Like, it's, you know, all the other bikes are 29ers, so this had the mixed wheel size, which seems kind of cool on paper, and I think the concept has some merit. I'm not a huge proponent of that, but it's fun to experiment and play around with stuff. But with the primer, all they did is take their 29er frame and stick a 27.5 wheel in the back. And that just compromised geometry. Climbing is a slacker C2 angle, bottom bracket drops. It just all felt like they were kind of had a good idea or something that'd be kind of fun to see in their lineup, but it just didn't come out the way I wanted. Sounds like you didn't corner hard enough on, on the way down. It I mean, the corner so is fun. Well. Yeah, the corner is fun, but I also uh, ate crap when I hit my oh, pedal. Oh, that also, thing. that was yeah, me. <laughs> there's that. And I then, didn't do that. I didn't yeah. do any pedal catches. And then some of the spec on the bike, there's just too many little factors that it just wouldn't be a bike that I'd want to spend more time on it. Like I said, it has potential and we both love the cornering on it, but mm -hmm. so you could make it better and it'd, it'd be fun that way, I think. Mike, what was your least favorite? Well, I'm kind of torn because the Intense is obviously a flawed bike, the Primer S. I mean, it, it is flawed. I think if we had the 29er here, 29 front and rear, I think we'd probably like it more. Um, but it's also an interesting bike and that's something that really stands out for me. 
The Occam, on the other hand, it doesn't do anything wrong, but it's also kind of boring. Like, it's light and relatively light. It pedals well enough. Uh, the suspension is well sorted. But, I mean, there's nothing really that excites me about the Occam. And we should maybe point out that you're the guy who drives a, an, an old Mini Cooper with a way big VTEC engine it, in it, and yeah. you're going to die in that car. Yeah. But it's interesting. Yeah, you have yeah. flawed vehicles, so like, having a flawed bike would be perfect Flaws for Flaws are interesting. Like, they're not, they're not always flaws. Like, that Intense is still far more capable than any trail bike from three, four years ago, by far. Definitely. But it's just not as capable, or we didn't feel quite as comfortable on it as the other bikes. You know, it's yeah, not quite exactly. as dialed, but it's it's more interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. All right. Well, which bike did you want to spend more time with? Like, what, which one did you want to kind of get to know more? I mean, I just want to spend all the time with the Optic, so that's kind of my answer. But the Pole is definitely an intriguing bike, and the more, you know, it's a fun, fast bike, and it's interesting to try to really come to terms with that handling and see how hard you can push it. So. Um, yeah, I'd be happy spending more time on that and probably trying a little longer travel for it and just seeing if it kind of makes it feel like just that <laughs> you can't do that. <laughs> I, I can do that. <laughs> you did do that. Yeah. I mean, right now it's a one, it's a 150, 140. Yeah. Yeah. So, and it feels like an enduro bike. It's so capable. Right. So the 160, you get a little more travel. And Why do you just, need more travel? I want to smash things even harder. You're, okay. Yeah. Right. It's yeah. a trail bike. Uh, that, I, that would make it not a trail bike. Yeah, yeah. 10 mils, that's all it takes. And you also in your new category. Yeah. I'm an enduro bike. <laughs> Isn't that how we do yeah. it? I think so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think my answer is the same as Kaz. I think it's a bike that takes time to learn how to ride because it is so capable. Um, you know, I was going faster on it than any other bikes and I want to keep doing that. I want to keep riding the bike. The rear suspension is so interesting. It's not perfect. You know, I wasn't a huge fan of the Cane Creek Shock, but I would like to spend more time setting it up and seeing what I could get out of it. Yeah, I think they opt out with a coil shock. I'm not sure if they do a coil shock, but you can get it with a rock shocks, yeah, air shock for sure. Different shocks, so yeah, same here, like a little different rear suspension it, on that. I wouldn't give up on that Cane Creek personally. I like dials and tuning and doing all the stupid things. And, yeah, well, I push a different shock that has dials, but maybe not that one. Yeah, okay, fair yeah, enough. Yeah. Okay. How was it on the Impossible Climb? Uh, it didn't do so well on the Impossible Climb. I don't know if you guys have seen that video. I thought I would get higher up on that because of that the, the holy seat tube angle yeah, that the, makes the, everything. The, chain, the chain stays are this long though. I don't know something how about a watching. four foot long <laughs> rear end made it difficult and the bike, it also felt quite long. And you know, I'm the guy that's always going on about like, bikes need to climb better. We give all these trail bikes and enduro bikes free passes. And like, they gave that one a free pass. With more time, I think I could, and some changes, I think I could live with that pole on the climbs and become very competent on the technical climbs with it. It just didn't happen during that impossible climb. So what you're saying is you want a few more shots of that tomorrow on that bike? I'm pretty tired. Maybe the next day. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, those are our thoughts in the trail category from the Pink Bike Field Test. So stay tuned for some more videos and including some more roundtable discussions of the other categories. If you have a comment, leave it down below and we'll do our best to answer them.